Okay, in this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of how to use the SEM function in Levon in order to carry out path analysis. Uh, additionally, I'll demonstrate uh, how to obtain um, a um, path diagram for the path analysis. <clears throat> so the data, the raw data is actually contained in a CSV file that you can download at this link right here uh, from my Google Drive. And so um, I already have a copy of the data in my downloads folder. So I'm just going to proceed by importing the data into our uh, basically creating a data frame called path data by using the read table function to read in uh, the data. So this is basically inside the quotation marks. This is just the name of the actual uh, CSV file located in the downloads uh, in my downloads folder. So uh, the first thing, though, before we uh, actually read the data in, we need to make sure that R is uh, pointed at uh, that particular folder. So just keep in mind that when you're running uh, any kind of analysis in R, um, you need to have R pointed at the uh, folder or the directory that contains the data. If you don't, then it's not going to be able to find it and carry out your analysis. So the data, because the CSV file is in my downloads folder, I'm going to go to File, change directory and I'm going to click on downloads right here and click on OK and so now it's pointed at that particular folder. So the next thing is I'm just going to use the uh, read table function in order to read the data in and, and create uh, a data frame that is called path data. So I'm going to actually just paste this in uh, right here. So I've copied and pasted. When I hit enter it's ready to go. And so if I type in path data you can see this is our uh, our data set and uh, you'll notice that we have variables performance goals achieve mastery interest and anxiety if we want to take a quick look at the structure of the data we can just use the str command and then the name of our data frame which is path data and there it is so um so at any rate now we're about ready to go the first thing that we need to do now after we've um, created we've called up our data frame or we have a data frame containing our data that's active in memory we need to uh, use the library function in order to call up the Levine package and the SEM plot uh, package. So I've already installed both of these, and I covered a, a little bit of their installation in previous videos. So I'm not going to go over that right now, but I am going to type in library uh, inside the SSLN, and then I'm going to do the same for uh, SEM plot, and then I'm going to hit enter. And so now you can see that uh, it, you know, it looks like there are warning messages, there's no problem with it. But both um, packages are now called up and now we can uh, analyze our data. So what you'll notice right here is that I'm creating uh, you know, this, this right here, the model information is actually contained in these lines right here. And so you'll see that this right here is basically a data object that's containing the model information. So you'll see it says path model and then I've got uh, basically a less than sign and a dash that is producing an arrow. And then you'll notice that it starts off with an apostrophe. So uh, basically with an apostrophe, and by the way, I need to also create a, a pound right there. Uh, with an apostrophe, um, it basically is indicating the start of specifying your model. And then an in apostrophe is indicating the end of that specification. So you'll notice that um, I have a pound sign right here. Anything following the pound sign on that line is going to be recognized as a comment. So I have path analysis. Uh, and then on the next line, I actually just create another pound sign and reflecting the regression. So basically, uh, the specifications of the paths within the model. So, so basically, the program is not going to recognize or try to do anything with those lines. It's just recognizing those as comments. Now on the next line, this is where we're actually specifying our model. And you can see that I've got a variable that's called achieve, and then it's followed by a little tilde right here. And that tilde is basically, um, you know, basically saying that, you know, achieve is a function of those variables that are falling on the right side of that tilde sign. So, um, so it's just a single tilde in the context of of uh, other, you know, other kind of model specifications. Sometimes you'll have an equal sign and a tilde, like if you're specifying um, a factor and its indicator variables, or if you have two tildes, it can specify a variance or a covariance. In this case, it's just a single tilde 
followed by the the each of the predictors of achieve, um, basically specifying the direct effects on achieve, where we have plus signs that are separating those variables. So on the next line we have interest, and um, and that is uh, being predicted by anxiety and mastery. So we have anxiety plus mastery on the right side of the tilde sign. So then we are again are following up with an apostrophe indicating the end of the specification of the model. So at any rate, you know, if we if we just kind of plug this in, I'll just copy and paste it into R right here. Uh, hit enter, you know, nothing happens because we haven't actually analyzed the data. All we've done is created a data object that contains the model specifications. Next, you can see that I've, um, I'm creating a new data object, which is going to contain the, S, the SEM results. So I'm using the SEM function, and basically uh, this function, this, the analysis is being carried out on the data object, uh, basically containing a model specification. So you can see right here where we have path model, that is basically being substituted in right here. Then we have data equals, and then our data frame name, which is path data. So in this case right here, if I just, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this in and hit enter, now the model has been fitted. So you don't see anything yet because we haven't requested any output. So um, if I type in summary and then fit, you'll see that now I get uh, various um, indices. You can see that I get, uh, you know, basically, um, not a whole lot in terms of the overall model fit information. Uh, you do see up here you've got the model fit test statistic, and it looks like it's a just identified model as the degrees of freedom are zero. Uh, but basically, this would be the maximum likelihood estimate. And then you've got the, um, the uh, regressions. These are all the unstandardized path coefficients for the model, as well as significance tests for them. So if we wanted to um, get uh, more fit measures, we can add in uh, fit.measures equal true, and we can get that information. So let's just, just, just in the interest of completeness, I'll just put that in, and you can see up here that, um, you know, that you would get lots more information. So there's the comparative fit index. You know, it's a one, and T is one. And basically, like I said, it's a just identified model, so it's uh, essentially indicating you know, perfect fit. Uh, which is pretty uninformative, but uh, nevertheless, you can if you ask for uh, those fit measures, and you can get more than just the chi-square um, goodness of fit test. So then, you, if we want, um, let's say we wanted standardized estimates for our, our path model, then we can type in parameter estimates with a capital E right here, fit, which is our data object uh, containing the results, and then standardized equals true. So in this case, if I, you know, I'm just going to copy this and paste it in. And so now you can see that the standardized estimates are actually appearing under the STD.all. You know, these are the, what we typically associate uh, with standardized estimates. So uh, very much, you know, pretty much like the beta coefficients in the context of, of uh, linear regression. So, uh, so be sure that you are reporting on you know those those standard assessments over here. Um, let's see other things. Uh, let's say we want to obtain our path diagram. So you can see right here that because we had called up the SEM plot up here, now we can use the SEM paths functions. So the SEM paths function we follow it up inside the quote the uh, parenthesis with fit, which again is referencing our original model results right here. I've got what equals, and then in quotation marks, paths, comma, and then what, and then capital L, and then for the rest of labels, equals, and then quotation marks, P-A-R. And then you can see I've got a rotation set at equal to two, and this is just going to affect the orientation of the, uh, of the um, diagram. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in and hit enter. And so now you can see the uh, path diagram. So these are the, using the PAR, what we end up with are the standard uh, coefficients for the model. If we uh, use the other option of um, using stand instead of PAR, then what we end up with are the standardized coefficients for the model. So uh, just to kind of show you what that looks like, 
and there it is. So these are the standard mass coefficients for the model. Um, I don't do a whole lot with the SEM plots, but if you want to know more about it, um, you know, it's not exactly the prettiest figure, but it does kind of do a little bit of job. If you want more information on how to um, use uh, that, um, that uh, package, then you can go to this site right here, and, um, and uh, there's a manual on it. And then there's also additional information on Levon uh, that I've kind of provided down here at some of these other um, places. So you can download this, um, this text file uh, underneath the video description and follow along. And uh, also you can download the data set as well underneath the video description. So I hope you found this video useful.